welcome students let's cover up the aspect of various types of mental retardation the various categories of mental retardation first we have is mild mental retardation now this category is from the iq range of 50 to 70 so this is the first category after we start from 70 lower on to 50 now in this the person is still educable the person can go on to the category of class 4th or class 6th the education can be till class 4th or class 6th the person is able to utilize various self help skills in terms of dressing himself up in terms of feeding doing the routine work tying the laces uh, counting money the person is able to do it and also this person is able to manage with social skills very well uh not of course like a normal uh, average intelligence individual but yes much better than the other categories so uh, a person with mild mr is able to have social capacity they are able to interact with others they are relatively able to adjust with other people they are able to respond socially emotionally also their expression and their receptivity is very good uh, of course better than the others and lesser than the average intelligence uh they do face some difficulty in terms of emotional uh like the communication aspect is relatively lesser than the uh average intelligence person they also have the category of vocational guidance where they are able to take up semi skilled work they are able to take up unskilled work they are able to manage their career uh with guidance uh they are able to marry and have children that is the aspect of uh, career and the aspect of education as well as the aspect of marriage then we have the category of moderate mr in moderate when we look at it it is normally ranging from 35 to 49 iq level now these people are normally able to uh, study till first or second grade they are not able to go beyond that we call them the trainable category self help uh, they are able to manage partially they face some problem where they need supervision and guidance uh, they require somebody constantly to supervise them when they are doing uh, self help skills like dressing up eating they do face problems uh, also vocational aspect they are uh, also requiring a lot of supervision they can do uh, you know they can make certain things like basket making weaving candle making but they re require a lot of guidance for that marriage as such is difficult for them having children difficult for them they are not able to manage so well socially not able to respond so well emotionally because they have some uh, limitation and deterioration in terms of their emotional abilities communication is difficult receptive communication is there but expressive is relatively limited uh, they have certain aspect of speech problems they are not really able to adjust very well socially then we had the third category which now starts the actual deterioration where these people face a lot of problem be it in terms of academics because they are not able to study of course their capacities are very very limited the iq range is from 20 to 35 so imagine it's like close to the lowest category of iq level they are uh, they do require a lot of assistance they are not able to manage their work independently be it academic as such we don't really expect them to do it because the capacity is limited uh, self help again they require a lot of assistance in terms of handling social situations expressing emotions again a very limited capacity vocational career aspect not really able to manage very well in terms of earning or managing money transaction or traveling by themselves or time coordination all of that gets very difficult the last category that we have is profound mental retardation now such people they have a iq level below 20 so imagine uh, they are normally bedridden and they are not able to manage very well in fact very very limited capacity to manage and they don't really survive long also they normally do not uh, extend on more than 15 years of age they have a very limited duration of uh, life because they are actually not really having any iq to survive and sustain themselves that is about mental retardation let's move on to the next topic substance use disorder this basically refers to the fact that somebody gets addicted to a particular substance now a substance can be anything it can be facebook addiction it can be any particular fluid addiction it can be coffee and tea somebody is addicted to so any kind of addiction tv addiction 
here we talk about the fact that you know why do people get addicted what is the reason behind addiction uh, why is somebody so dependent on a particular substance and gets so much enjoyment and stimulation that is not able to uh, be happy without that external outside situation or stimuli now a lot of times people get a high enjoyment when they take in a particular substance Let's talk about the majorly addictive or majorly abused substance, which is alcohol. Here we'll understand the different categories of substance use, what are the meanings, but let's understand why people get addicted to alcohol. Now, a lot of people believe that you know alcohol is uh, a stimulant; it gives a lot of energy, but it's actually a myth because alcohol depresses the brain. Initially, it definitely gives a high. That is why people get addicted to it. but later on it depresses the brain it makes one sad lowers the capacity to do the different tasks it has a varied range of behaviors which we'll just discuss it normally starts from adolescence where children uh, start experimenting with different kind of alcohol now the concept of hookah is very very uh, highly uh, you know interesting to children and adolescents where they go for hookah bars and everything uh, it is also addiction because in that also the level of stimulation the level of addiction the level of substance which is addictive is there so it's not that it doesn't have nicotine content it does have nicotine content and understanding that you know there's an emptiness in the person because of which the person wants to dissolve all the worries all the stresses all the pain into alcohol now it is very very socially acceptable drug and that is the reason why peer pressure plays a major role where children and adolescents start up with it just because they want to try out with their friends they don't want to be isolated that you know every friend is trying and i am having the courage to say no to it because i don't believe in it and that is how where they start up with it and you know nobody starts with the thought that uh, i am taking a peg and i am going to get addicted but that is how it happens because the brain gets used to it the brain develops this dependency so just because it is socially acceptable and everybody is trying it out in a party doesn't mean that you also have to get into it just because everybody is getting you don't believe in it you have every right and you should say a no to it because you know that it can get very addictive and you've seen the condition of people who have this addiction it's like the brain is used to that substance so the brain doesn't understand the concept of will power that they think of leaving it and they are able to leave it the brain has been used to that pleasure for so many years that to get the same amount of pleasure the brain would want an increased capacity and that is where people even go on to trying out different kinds of drugs where they're not satisfied with one they are now getting bored of it the brain wants a different a higher level drug so they try out a different kinds and it's very difficult then to come out of it it's a revolving door phenomena where the person uh, wants to give it a try but then the brain doesn't support there are withdrawal symptoms and the person's physical symptoms like nausea like uh, a lot of stomach ache headache uh, vomiting sensation all these aspects do not let the person leave it very easily so the person is under control of that particular substance and let's understand the three meanings which are important to understand substance abuse see there's one concept of use and there's one concept of abuse use is normal but for any addiction nothing is normal for any substance to which the brain is getting addicted nothing is normal it is always abuse then where the person's family life gets affected lot of consequences the person's life deteriorates totally because of the uh, ad- excessive intake of a particular substance it turns out to be maladaptive problematic behavior pattern uh, initially a substance uh, produces a lot of changes in the consciousness level altered level of feeling altered level of thinking you get a high you feel very confident and happy but later on the actual problem starts so when we talk about the different kinds of substance abuse we will cover under it heroin abuse alcohol abuse cocaine abuse starting from alcohol but let's understand what is this major talk about substance dependency now dependency covers three concepts under it one when the person's brain has such a strong craving for a particular substance because it has been so much used to it now let's understand one thing very clearly that substance abuse is a disorder it is a mental illness it needs treatment it is not that the person will decide one fine day getting up that i'm facing so much problem because of this substance in every area of my life be it financial be it 
emotional be it family nobody supports me nobody understands me i am only into the substance i've left my work it is not that the person decides and get over it the person requires proper treatment like any other mental disorder so it requires a very systematic treatment at a de addiction center where the person will be rehabilitated back to normal so we talk about abuse concept is basically different consequences on the person's life where the family gets ruined the family doesn't accept the person relationships are spoiled damage financially at the workplace emotionally confidence self concept everything there's a problem um also dependence craving it starts with there's an intense desire where the person cannot survive without this particular drug there are two more concepts tolerance and withdrawal tolerance is once you start at a certain level one peg a day moves on increases on and ultimately 10 years 12 years down the line the person is starting with so much amount of alcohol because it has increased over time the brain is not satisfied with the same level all throughout life once the brain gets a high from this will increase on and the level keeps on increasing that is known as tolerance the brain develops a tolerance for it then we have withdrawal under dependence is the physical symptoms so many symptoms where the person wants that drug at any cost if doesn't get it the brain and the body respond and react to it then we have the major aspect of compulsive alcohol taking the alcohol dependence where abuse and dependence happening people take a lot of a very large amount of alcohol regularly and then when they don't take it because they're so dependent they experience the withdrawal symptoms uh next category in fact in alcohol when we think about it we understand the effects of alcohol what damage does it do like initially when alcohol or ethyl alcohol enters the body at that time it is from the blood straight away picked up by the central nervous system and the person's motor abnormality starts there is a lot of intoxication happening the person is not able to maintain a motor balance or a motor coordination motor movement slows down the person's brain gets inhibited so the person feels very confident and happy and speaks out whatever he wants gets very friendly also uh, emotionally the person is inhibited so shares a lot talks a lot uh, so emotional damage is there then motor damage is there in fact it is believed that you know when people take alcohol they sleep well but that's also a myth once the brain is inhibited their sleep gets disturbed a lot of people have a tendency that they would take a certain uh, you know amount before they go off to sleep so then morning when they get up they have a hangover they have a problem again uh, that is about alcohol and its effects let's move on to the heroin abuse and dependence now the most important danger of heroin abuse is uh, the respiratory center slows down the breathing pattern slows down which can lead to major death and also it is a very very strong substance which results in uh, you know this dependency is very harmful because once the person has started from gateway drugs of smoking and drinking the person then moves on this higher level drugs of heroin and cocaine which cause a major dependency and a major damage to the person which is almost irreversible because the person has tried a higher level drug which uh, the body totally goes under the control of it and doesn't want anything else just wants those empty calories to be dependent on next we have is cocaine abuse and dependence the major problem with cocaine although it affects all the areas of life and just deteriorates the person's life completely but the major aspect is about the feelings of depression anxiety sleep problems these are the major problem remain apart from the other complexities that happen in life that is about the different kinds of drugs we also have the names of different drugs uh which helps us understand what are the various categories apart from these three we have amphetamines which are stimulants which are taken by players a lot of time you must have heard of doping where the players are caught for amphetamines where they get sudden flush of energy to perform their task perfectly uh, also some students abuse it of course it leads to a lot of problem later on because the blood stream then has so much amount of it and then life later on becomes a problem also we have sedatives which people get very dependent on they are not able to sleep without taking those sleeping pills or sedatives we also have nicotine which is very very common uh, there in cigarettes there in pan uh, and tambaku all these things have uh, nicotine content in it 
Uh, we also have opioids, particularly the morphine injections. Uh, the worst form then we have is hallucinogens, which produce hallucinations. We have the category of LSD under it. That's about it for substance abuse. Let's just summarize the chapter of what we have done till now. We've understood the concept of what is meant by disorder, the definition of it. We moved on to the history of disorders. How did understanding of disorders develop? Then we moved on to what are the factors which influence, what are the factors which are underlying the disorders, covering the various psychological perspectives and approaches. Then we started with the different kinds of disorders, starting from anxiety disorders, five categories under it. We moved on to somatoform disorders, which also had four categories under it. Then we covered the dissociative disorders, having four categories under it. Then we moved on to the aspect of mood disorders and suicide. Uh, why it occurs and what are the different categories under it, three categories under it. Then we moved on to the concept of schizophrenia, the extreme form of mental illness. And then we understood the various aspects of childhood developmental and behavioral disorders, under which we covered internalizing and externalizing disorders. Also including under it was eating disorders and mental retardation. And then finally we moved on to the substance abuse how a particular substance is used and misused, leading to maladaptive functioning of a person. That's about it for the chapter on disorders. Thank you.